So about two weeks ago, uh, I became an uncle to uh, our fifth, my fifth nephew, niece and nephew, I guess. If you total them up, boys and girls, there's five. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, So I just became an uncle for the fifth time uh, two weeks ago. And uh, just reflecting a little bit about um, how I kind of watch my brothers um, and their wives parent and care for their children. And it's just fascinating, like in a very positive way. Like I just sit back and I just watch and I'm just like, this is awesome and crazy at the same time. Um, and there's the basic general pattern. They're all, uh, all five of them are under the age of five. And so when we're at, at big gatherings, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it might be, um, they, they, the basic pattern is they run to their mom or dad and they need something, right? It's a popsicle uh, or a Band-Aid or whatever it is, mom, 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 I need it, dad, dad, I need this. And then they get the thing, or they don't. You know, maybe it's like mom's like, no, you've already had 10 popsicles, you know. But whatever, either they get it or they don't, but either way, they run off again, you know, back to play with the cousins and everyone else again. And this is back and forth. And they need something else, so they come to mom and dad, right? And this process plays out, You've, you've all seen it too, but I guess it's just fascinating to watch when you know the people that are parenting, um, and, and, you know, I, the, my brothers who, like, I wrestled with them, you know, and, like, we we uh, good friends and grew up together, and then you see them in this role. It's just fascinating to, to, to watch that. And they, they do that um, out of, of, of a spirit of generosity and love for their children. And, and yet I think I was reflecting a little bit then about this in regards to the readings this week, and I think that if we're honest with ourselves, I know I do this, I treat God like the little kids, my nieces and nephews, treat their parents. And like all kids treat their parents. When I need something, I run to God. And, you know, God, fix this. I'm in a crisis. Ah, you know, I need help with something. I need more money. I need a better job. I need, um, you know, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. I I, I need help. And and, And we go to God for things, for favors. And then a lot of times we run away again. Right? When we get it or we don't get what we were asking for, but either way, we're like, well, that worked or that didn't work, but, and then we go, we go away again. And I think that, I'm, again, I'm, if I'm honest, I do that with God. And it's not that God doesn't want to grant us our requests. It's not that God is saying, you know, like, no, unless you love me enough, then I, then I will care about you or do the, the thing that you need. Um, God, God, God is like, he loves us as my, my, my brothers and their wives. They don't sit there and say like, no, no band-aids for you, even though you're bleeding all over the place, you know. No, you know, you can't have, no, I mean, they, my, mom, my brothers and their wives understand that's part of being a parent. You care for the needs of your children. You, you provide for them, and, and as long as it's good for them, you, you give them the things that they need and are asking for. But there's also a sense in which, of course, my brothers and their wives are not thinking that this is going to be, this is all it means to be a parent, is band-aids and popsicles and requests. I think my, as I know now as a 36-year-old, like there's a part of when you grow up, you mature hopefully, and that that relationship with your parents develops into more than just band-aids and popsicles and, and genie requests. Like there's, there's a relationship that's there that develops, and that's a beautiful thing, and I love that. And I think my parents love that. And I know that my brothers and their wives are thinking that, you know, someday it won't just be that we're just continuing to grant genie requests, right? And I think in the same way, God looks at us and, says, and, and thinks of us in the same way. He loves us, God loves us more than we love ourselves. He knows us more than we know ourselves. And so God wants to give us, and, and, and if we need things and we go to God and we ask for things, if they're for our good, he, he grants them. For us, But I think God, of course, the saints and the church tell us over and over and over again, the scriptures tell us over and over and over again that God desires more than just being a person, a genie in a bottle who grants things. And so what I want to think about is, again, our prayer life. When we pray, what, are, what, is, what does it mean to you to be a person of prayer? I think for me, for most of my life, it meant asking for things, petitions, 
You know, and again, that's a good thing. That's a good start. But is that all? And so that brings us then to the readings for this weekend. We hear about, in the first reading, we hear a prophecy about someone who will come along and eventually heal people of their blindness, their deafness, cure their illnesses. And then in the gospel, we hear Jesus actually doing that. Do you think the prophecy is more than just pe- than, than, than that day where our physical illnesses will be cured? There's also a sense in which many people have read this to understand that it's taught, there's a spiritual meaning to that as well. Christ healing not just our physical ailments when we go to heaven, but that now, there's a spiritual component that Christ desires to heal me of my spiritual body right now in this moment, my spiritual deafness. The sense in which I'm blind to things that are going on in the world. That I'm blind to things that God has in store for me. And God wants to cure me of that. He wants to cure me at a deeper level than just the things that I happen to think that I need tonight. God wants in deeper than that. And He wants to cure us of our deafness. The ways in which we can't even hear what God's trying to say to us. And so a lot of times, again, we move from obstacle to obstacle. Something falls in our place, and we're like, oh my gosh, and we freak out, and we run to God, and we're like, okay, God, I'm going to pray again. I need help with this thing that just fell in the way. Help me over it. Help me around it. And I think what Christ is saying to us is, if it's for your good, I will. I will help you with this. I will help you over this, because I love you. But really what I want to do is cure you of your blindness so that you can get over it yourself. So that you can see these things coming and why they're coming and that there's more to it than just this particular moment. Again, I think as a priest, and maybe it's just that there's so many things that happen as a priest on a daily basis that maybe I was thinking that perhaps part of it is I've just given up on the whole idea of trying to pray for one thing at a time. Because there's so many things that, that, that go on, and maybe your life is that way too. If not, it will be at some point. There's so many things. If I, if I just went one petition at a time, it, just, it, just, it, it doesn't work that way. It, that, that's not the depth in which God's calling us to. And I've decided and have understood more and more fully, I think as a priest and as an adult, That really, again, what it means is I need to turn and allow God in on a deeper level to heal heal me so that then I can, when these issues arise, I just can can help, I can get over them in that way because I, I know and I see more and I hear more and I'm understanding more fully about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a person who loves and so on and so forth. There's a great line from a mystic, a, a, a mystic from several hundred years ago in the church, and he said that we should not think so much about what we are to do, but who we are to be. We are not supposed to think so much about what we are to do, but who we are to be. And I think that's kind of the same thing. We think a lot about what I'm supposed to do, what I have to do today, what I'm supposed to do tomorrow, and all these things, and that becomes the totality of my existence. But again, as this person, as this, this saint and this mystic was saying, really, ultimately, it becomes rec- a recognition, if we're on the right path, that it's more about who I am to be, more so than it is about the things that I'm supposed to do and the obstacles that will come my way. And so, we have a title for Christ in the church, one of many, and that is the, the Divine Physician. The Divine Physician. And he is then the person who cures our blindness and our spiritual blindness, who heals us from our spiritual deafness. The way that the divine physician does that is through prayer and through the grace of the sacraments. Particularly, of course, the grace of the Eucharist and confession. But all of the grace that comes to us through all the sacraments. Prayer and grace through the sacraments. Are you spending time in prayer, not just making out a request slip to God, but really opening yourself up and just sitting in the presence of God and saying, Lord, heal me. We get so focused on results sometimes. You know, we're like, okay, I'm going to sit down here for five minutes and I need to see five minutes of results, five minutes of improvements, five minutes of prayer requests answered. God doesn't work that way. 
The only way that God will come in and change who we are at a deeper level, who, the only way that God will change our being is by us just taking time and letting God and trying to listen to God and still our hearts and our minds and allowing God to work on us in the quiet. That's why we've worked really hard to have our church open more fully. Not that this is the only place to pray, not that this is the only place to be quiet, but certainly being in the presence of Christ is a special thing. And it's a great way to draw even closer to our Lord to allow Christ to do what Christ does, which is heal us. So finally then, I'll just end with the fact that it takes humility sometimes to recognize that we have blind spots. To recognize that we are in some ways spiritually deaf to God. That we need healing. There are some people in their pride who say, I've got it all figured out. Me and God, I completely understand. I'm completely converted. I'm completely this or that. I don't need any help. I don't need any changing at a deeper level in my soul. I have no wounds that need healed. So tonight we pray for the humility to admit, to admit that we need Christ in our life to come in and to work and do what Christ did, the divine physician, to cure us from our blindness and our deafness. So we may once again be restored to that vision and that understanding of who Christ calls us to be.